Hi guys, Mira here, back again for another video, and it's been way too long since my last video, so I'm really excited to be starting the series of tutorials on the different NUA treatment areas. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the admins here at the NUA Beauty Community on Facebook, and I do evidence-based skincare content on Instagram and Facebook. Now, I have been kind of working on my lighting and my little background setup here, so it's a work in progress. It's gonna keep getting better. I think I'll probably need one more light, and I'm gonna be switching to a planar background next week but hopefully it's looking better already versus the last video so thank you guys for hanging with me now as I mentioned in the start of the video we are going to be covering the different treatment areas for the new device there's a total of six however since there's one on each side it'll be a three-part video series and I'm gonna quickly insert them here Before we get started on the slower treatment area though it is important to quickly cover kind of the aging process as a whole since it's so much more than skin as we get older we have bone loss we have facial muscles that are kind of lengthening as well as repeated facial expressions contributing to dynamic wrinkles we've got static wrinkles and a huge part of facial aging is actually the fat compartments shifting as well as fat atrophy leading to volume loss so for this, this lower treatment area, a very common complaint with women especially is going to be jowling. And those facial fat compartments shifting, especially in the center of the face, do contribute to that. However, another piece of that is going to be a loss of elasticity in the skin, which of course the NUA is going to be amazing for. And even though we can't do anything about the subcutaneous tissue at home or the fat, we can kind of thicken and firm the skin with our new device, which is gonna help conceal those deeper aging related changes. So there's, you know, there's a lot that we can do to improve that area and kind of mask the appearance of some of the deeper aging with our new devices. Other part two that I wanna cover is that even though we are focusing on this lower area today, you are gonna to want to consider the upper treatment areas. Since when we tighten and firm that skin up here, it can help smooth out the lower skin too. So just keep that in mind. Um, however, the really flexible part of the new device is that if you don't have time to do all of the treatment areas every night, you can focus on the two corresponding treatment areas that are of most concern to you and do the 30 days at five days a week. And then once you've, you're in the maintenance for that area, then you can move to the next one. So, you know, it's a little bit more manageable to do that if you're short on time like I am. Really quick too, make sure that you're getting underneath the chin with your treatment. It's super important not to forget that area. And I find the new very helpful in tightening up that a submental area. And the other thing I want to mention and why I recommend recommend the new device so often is because you don't have to be at the same place in the aging process as me or as someone else you know you can be someone who's younger and focused on prevention and the new device has been you know tested on women from their 30s all the way up until their 70s you can also be someone who's maybe already seeing areas of concern that you want to target or you could be someone that has already gone in office to an injector or a plastic surgeon and kind of had some professional intervention done and you want a device that can act as you know some maintenance between professional treatments that is completely fine too you know neurotoxin or even a facelift isn't going to thicken the collagen and elastin in the skin so the NUA is very versatile and very helpful for you know regardless of where you're at in the aging process or whether you're kind of taking a more natural approach or you've been sought professional treatments. Alright guys, enough talking. Let's get started on the demo. As I've mentioned before, and I will mention again because it's super important, for skin prep, for this treatment, make sure that your skin has been very thoroughly cleansed. The reason for this is because the new device has the added benefit of something called electroporation, where the electrical current can help drive skincare actives into the skin, like any beneficial ingredients in your gel, for example. However, you don't want this to occur with your sunscreen and makeup particles that you've maybe left behind, so cleanse super, super well. I've gone ahead and put my hair up before sitting down. I've also carefully cleansed this area, just so you guys know. Now, if you have the NUA Plus or the wireless version of the NUA, you're just gonna make sure that before your treatment, you've properly charged it. It's best just to charge it overnight so it's all ready to go. Where if you have the classic like me, you're just going to go ahead and plug it into the power source. However, before I do that, I just make sure it's set to zero. Both of these devices have the same results, the same technology. The only difference is the cord. It's ideally best to use the NUA gel, which has been formulated for use with this device, and it's what they used in all of their clinical studies. You are going to apply two stripes very liberally down the electrodes, which I will insert here. So again, I've applied the gel very liberally, and I'm gonna use the device itself to apply the gel. As you can see, I'm only applying the gel to the treatment area, 
and only the side that I'm about to do. It's really important to only put the gel down right where you're gonna be using it. If you allow the gel to sit, like on the other side, it can get kind of dry and it's not ideal for conductivity. Now, once I've applied the gel, I'm gonna slide it up to two. At this point, it's a solid blue. If you're ever doing your treatment and you notice that it's solid blue and it's not turning green, it's because it's not emitting any radio frequency energy and you wanna make sure to press the button. I've totally done that, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Then press the button. Once it starts blinking, I'm ready to start. And I'm gonna do slow, small circles up and down the treatment area. I find that as long as you're doing slow, small circles up and down the treatment area and you're applying kind of steady pressure, nothing painful, as long as you're doing that, it should turn green fairly quickly. If it's not, um, just make sure that you don't have any dried gel on the probes. You know, make sure you've got enough gel. Make sure again, that nice steady pressure. On the flip side of that, if it just feels way too hot, you can do larger, faster circles, kind of like this. Um, if it's still way too hot, you can bring it down to level one. Um, but most people should be able to tolerate level two and those small, slow circles. You know, it should never be uncomfortable or burning, but you know, we want it to be as, as effective as possible. Up here on the upper face, I will hold it more like this. Um, but underneath the jaw, I do find it helpful to hold it horizontal. It just helps me really get in there. So after the four minutes up, it will vibrate and shut off. Um, so at that point, I will come back and we will switch sides. It just vibrated and shut off, so it's now back to the solid blue, telling me that my time is up. Before I go over to this other treatment area, I'm just gonna quickly clean the probes here. Again, since this gets warm during the treatment, the gel can kind of dry on the probes and that could potentially interfere with conductivity. So I just like to take a soft gauze pad, just nothing that's gonna scratch the probes and just kind of gently remove that gel. So now that they're clean, and again, it is not blinking, so it's not on, I'm gonna apply more gel and then apply it to the treatment area, same as the other side. And then using the probes, I'm just applying that gel to the treatment area I'm about to do. Same thing as last time, pressing the button to start the treatment. I'm doing the slow, small circles up and down the treatment area. It's a little hard to do it on camera, but I'm trying to lift my head so you can see. And steady pressure, and you can see it's already started to turn green. So same deal as the other side, up and down the treatment area. When the four minutes is up, I will come back and we will wrap this up. I tend to really rush, I'm always in a hurry. So I have to kind of remind myself to kind of slow down sometimes because we want to make sure that we're getting every part of the treatment area here. All right, guys, I just finished the other side of the treatment area. I'm again cleaning the probes here. If I was moving on to another treatment area, then I would just do a quick wipe here. But since I am going to be done for the night, I'm giving a very thorough wipe and kind of cleaning them. And if they're ever really need a thorough cleaning, you can use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol even. And then I'm also just kind of wiping off the excess gel find that when I go to rinse it off, if I've kind of wiped off the extra, it's a little bit easier. You can also use like a microfiber cloth to do this. And then I am turning off my new device, putting the cap on, putting away in its little bag. Now that the treatment is done, I'm gonna go ahead and go wash off the gel, do my skincare as normal. The only thing that I would not do is any um, like microneedling or laser or chemical peel. Obviously, I'm not gonna combine that with my new treatment. All right guys, I actually took a quick little break because I was interrupted by both my kid and my cat. But I wanted to come back really quickly before I wrap up the video because I've put away my new device and I'm about to go cleanse my skin or just rinse off the gel or my treatment area. I'm about to do some skincare. A few of you have kind of asked like what skincare ingredients I like to use after my new treatments. Now, just to be super clear, you don't need a complicated routine. The new device will work amazing and you will get results regardless of your skincare, okay? So if you're a skincare minimalist, as long as you've got like a good cleanser and moisturizer, sunscreen, vitamin A for bonus points, you're gonna get results not to worry. This is for skincare junkies like me. Now, I thought about it for a little bit and I'm gonna actually just talk skincare ingredients versus specific skincare products, just because you might already have ingredients in your skincare routine already that you could reach for. And also, I just don't know your skin type or your skincare concerns. So it's better that I suggest the ingredients and then you can look for them in your routine. Now, first, first ingredient, most important that I already mentioned is vitamin A. 
it's the gold standard for anti-aging as far as topical skincare goes, not treatments. This is gonna be amazing for cell turnover, for aging, for texture. It's a great skincare ingredient that I highly recommend in any skincare routine focused on anti-aging. The other one, as Nua has mentioned before, is vitamin C. It's critical for collagen synthesis. So it's amazing after a new treatment since you are focused on stimulating the formation of new collagen. It's also a skin brightener and an antioxidant, so it's just a very um, helpful multi-purpose ingredient. Speaking of multi-purpose ingredients, we've got niacinamide, aka vitamin B3. It's also great for brightening and anti-aging, but it's also really great for the skin barrier. And since skin hydration is important for good conductivity during treatments, using niacinamide and kind of helping your skin retain moisture better can be really helpful. And then as I mentioned, hydration is important. So I really like to use a good hydrating toner with humectants like hyaluronic acid and glycerin, beta-glucan, amino acids, even peptides. But just since you're cleansing your skin and then you're rinsing off that gel and hydrated skin is important for conductivity, it's good to use a good hydrator after your new treatment if you can. And then lastly, I always finish up with a good moisturizer, something that ideally has other beneficial ingredients, but mainly the most important function of a moisturizer is to really lock in that hydration so that the next time you do your new treatment, your skin isn't dry or compromised. Your skin is gonna be nice and healthy for that future treatment. But again, you know, the skincare, as I mentioned, was kind of an extra little thing for those who had asked me. The most important part is just cleansing off the gel, doing your skincare routine, and making sure that your skin is ready to go for sunscreen in the morning and then uh, your new treatment later on. I'm gonna go ahead and go do that and wrap this up for you guys. As I mentioned before, I do evidence-based skincare content, but I'm the newest to doing kind of video content, so I really appreciate you guys being so patient with me and I'm definitely going to continue to improve, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, requests for future content, please put them in the comments down below and I will see you guys soon for the next video in this tutorial series. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful week and I hope you have a wonderful holiday if you celebrate. Bye.